What is a do on sale clause? What's going on YouTube? It's Matt Fairclough. Welcome to Mentorship Monday. My name is Matt. My company is the DeRosa Group. And I wrote an awesome book called Raising Private Capital, which you guys should check out from biggerpockets.com. Use the coupon code Live Private Money if you buy it on Bigger Pockets. And if you already read the book, here's my do me a favor today. I always ask you guys for a favor. My favor today is write the book or review on Amazon. Whether you bought it from Amazon or not, all I ask is that if you read it, you know, if you didn't read it, don't do that. If you didn't read it, buy it on Bigger Pockets. But if you did read it, Take the 30 seconds it'll take and write the book or review on Amazon, please. Um, because I'd l I just need more reviews. I'd love to hear what you have. I'd love to hear your feedback. Love to hear what you guys say. Um, and then it also helps out the book and helps Amazon promote, know that you guys love the book. Um, if you leave it a review there, I'll even put a, the link to the review uh, section right here in the notes on this. So you'll have no excuse. So just go and click this and leave it a review, please. Today's question comes from Isaac. Isaac, thank you message dear sir or madam all right uh, i saw your video on youtube and just wanted to clarify a few things i'm about to close a home in a few weeks which is a duplex i'm going to use my va loan to close the deal very good we can talk about va loans in another mentorship monday if you guys want but a va loan means that our friend isaac here uh is a veteran thank you for your service to our country isaac um, and he gets access to something called a VA loan, which is something through the Veterans Administration, which in essence allows him to buy properties at really, really good rates and it lots of low money down, which is a nice way to help up our veterans so they can buy property. Um, I've been looking at a few different things, such as a small business, an LLC, business bank, da da da. Uh, I saw that you explain a little bit in the do on sale clause, but I'm a little confused about it. Can, how can I do everything correctly? And since this is my first duplex, do I need to set up an LLC? Okay. Here's what the do on sale clause is, and I'll you know we talk a lot about LLCs here on the YouTube channel, and so I'll we'll, we'll go there again, right? The do on sale clause is a clause, a you know a section of your mortgage that like 99% of the of of, of uh, your mortgages are going to have this, um, which the do on sale clause says this that if you sell a property, the mortgage is due upon sale. Meaning that if the if you sell the property up on the market, you can't sell it to someone else subject to that mortgage, meaning they would just take over the payments and start paying them for you. Um, that's called selling a property subject to. Um, there are ways around the due on sale clauses on subject to's. I have never done a subject to deal. We can talk about them. I might even bring in an expert if you guys want to email help me at durosergroup.com and we can talk about subject to's further. I do have friends that have done them. I have yet, uh, I have no interest in doing them or um, have not done them myself, but I know people that do. Um, so the due on sale clause says that. Now that's pretty straight up because most properties, um, when they're sold, they're sold to, from me, to this other person over here who has nothing to do with me and is another, another party and buys the property from me. The reason why people get concerned about the due on sale clause in, as an investor is that let's say I own the property in my own personal name and I want to move it into an LLC as my friend Isaac here is referring to. I can then, I can take that property and do a something called a quit, like you want to quit your job, quit claim deed, okay, which is pretty much moving the property from, from one entity to another. It's, it's a very, it's, it's like selling it for a dollar is the easy way to explain a quit claim deed. Meaning I, I'll sell this property for $1 and all the liens and encumbrances and everything that's attached to it stay with it. But I sell it for $1 from myself, me personally, to my LLC over here. It is a way to move pro to move things from one thing to another thing over here. That's what a quit claim deed is. So that's saying, I quick claim deed the property from me to my LLC. That's how you transfer it. Problem is, I just sold that property for one dollar, right? It doesn't matter how much it's for, but I sold it for consideration and I moved it from one party, me, to another party. So that's a sale, you know, kind of sort of. Even though I'm on the LLC and it's me, so the quick claim deed can trigger a due on sale clause because I did sell the property. Okay. That said, number one. Banks are not going to, let's just talk in, in real terms. We can go by the letter of the operating of the agreement that you sign with the bank, but let's go in reality. If you continue to make the payments to the bank, they're not going to call up the due on sale clause. This is something that, that people to buy a property subject to, you know, what we'll tell people is that if you keep making those payments, the bank's not going to bother you, right? And that's true. 
So especially if you are the your individual owner and you move into an LLC that you're the owner of as well, you're really still in control and you're still the personal guarantor of the mortgage, right? So I'm the guarantor now. I'm still the guarantor once I move it over, okay? Um, so you're, you're, you're triggering the due on sale clause because it is a sale, but you're not changing who the guarantor is. You're not changing what the collateral is, the property itself, and I'm not changing who's writing those checks. It's still me. It's me. It's just now there's me with an LLC in between me and the bank. So yes, it's a sale, but it's also not a big deal. I've never, I've never in my life heard of anyone. And now if you've seen this happen, then leave it in the, in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. But I've never heard of anybody that's had a property get called back by a bank because somebody moved the property from themselves to an LLC that they also own. Okay. All that said, the so bottom line is it's not a big deal. You can do it and you can just move it over with a quick claim deed. That said, you don't play with fire for too long. And so if you're going to quick claim deed the property from yourself to an LLC to get into an LLC, so you get the benefits of an LLC, like, um, asset protection, somebody has a slip and fall, they can't get to you. Um, it no longer shows up on your, um, well, I guess it wouldn't show up, but it would show up on your personal credit. So forget I was going to say that. Um, but, uh, the, the whole personal credit thing still shows up cause you're the guarantor and then it was in your name originally. It, it stays in your name once you move it over. So forget I said that. Um, but you just get the benefits of an LLC, which is just asset protection. You start running this thing like a business and all those other reasons, right? So what you want to do is once you're in the LLC, then you want to refinance the property eventually, like within six months to a year. That's what I've done that move property in LLC, then refinanced it afterwards. And then I refinance it with a small community bank, um, that like a, like a small bank, not an enormous bank, but a small bank. Then once I do that, uh, Mr. Isaac would take off his VA loan. That would go away. Show it would not show up on his personal credit anymore. So I got ahead of myself earlier in my comments, but it would no, then it would no longer show up on his personal credit. It would be on the um, on the LLC, not on him anymore. So that's the process. People worry too much about the due on sale clause or make that a sticking point of why they can't buy it in their own name and then move it over later to an LLC. You can do that. Just don't let it, don't quit claim deem it, deed it and let a mortgage that's in your name sit on the property for like five years. Do it and then get it refinanced within six months to a year. You'll be fine. I've done that before. I know many people that have done it as well. You just don't, don't want to play with it with fire for too long. Okay. Um, that is my opinion on quick on, on uh, due on sale clauses. I should just say I'm not an attorney, so I'm not giving you guys legal advice here. Um, and, and I'm not telling you to break your loan agreements or anything like that to your bank. I'm just letting you know uh, what matters and what doesn't with lenders. Okay? Um, so that's what I got, guys. Uh, I appreciate you, Isaac, and thank you again for your service to our country. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And uh, check us out at theroastergroup.com. You want to hear more about what we have to offer, what we're up to. And have a great and profitable week.